This video will discuss point groups in molecular symmetry and group theory. So this is important to us because the set of all the symmetry operations of an object form what is called a point group. So our previous video on groups, we said that all of the symmetry operations of a molecule form the prop obey the properties of what is called a group, and the group that they form is called a point group. So the point group of a molecule gives you a lot of information about it because it tells you what symmetry operations and symmetry elements that that particular molecule has. And then we can use uh, more information about that particular point group to learn various restrictions about what the properties of that molecule and what that means. So starting out, we have labels that look like capital C or what are called cyclic groups, just for your information for why that's a C. If the only symmetry element that a molecule has is E, the identity, something that you might say has no symmetry, but in fact it does have the E, that's the only element that every single molecule has, then that falls into a point group called C1. Notice that C1 would be a rotation by 360 over n degrees or 360 degrees, which is equivalent to doing nothing. So molecules that don't have any symmetry elements besides identity are C1. If a molecule only has the identity and an inversion center, which is somewhat uncommon for molecules, but it does happen occasionally, that'd be a CI point group. If a molecule only has the E and a mirror plane, so only a single mirror plane, that'd be a CS. Notice that S and sigma start with the same letter. And if the molecule only has a single proper rotation axis, that'd be E and CN, and that is a CN type of point group. Um, CS is for anything that's a planar molecule that doesn't have any other operations. And CN is, so that's, this is somewhat common. CN is somewhat uncommon, but it can happen as well. Um, so things like C2, C3, C4, if, if it only has that single axis, then uh, that is the point group. Okay, if you start to have more combinations of things, so if your principal axis is a CN axis and you also have uh, N sigma Vs, so you have N mirror planes that are, that are parallel to that principal axis, for example, water has two mirror planes that are perpen that are parallel to that C2 axis. Then you have a CNV point group. Water is a C2V point group. Ammonia is a C3V point group. And there are various other examples of molecules with higher uh, CNV than that. But C2V is a, is a fairly common point group for molecules, as is C3V. All right, CNH would be if we have a principal axis CN, we have a mirror plane perpendicular to that, sigma H, and we have an I, an inversion center as well, if this N is even. So if this N is odd, we wouldn't have an inversion center. If it's even, we would. So something like uh, hydrogen peroxide in a staggered conformation would be C2H. Um, things that are in a plane that break some kind of symmetry, um, if you imagine uh, boric acid, uh, BOH parenthesis 3. Um, it's planar, but the kind of tails of the OH kind of stagger, splay in the same direction. That'd be a C3H. Um, then moving on to what are called dihedral groups, things where you have this label D. So the common feature of a dihedral group is where you have uh, your principal axis CN, and then there are n c2 axes perpendicular to there. So you could have something like d3, where we have a c3 and three c2s, d2, uh, c2, and two perpendicular c2s, or d6, a c6, and six perpendicular c2s. If that's all it has is a principal axis and that many perpendicular c2s, that's a dn group. DNs are some of the most difficult to see. Sometimes there are like organometallic ligands that have those types of point groups, but they're difficult to visualize, which is why Otterbein is uh, great to use. The symmetry at Otterbein website, links in the description. DND, which is something like um, staggered ethane would be D3D. We have E, C3, three 
uh, C2s, three sigma D axes, so they're, perp they're parallel to our C3 axis and they bisect our C2s. And in S2n, in ethane, you have an S6 axis. So again, on Otterbein, it's great to practice all these things. For example, I can go to the gallery. And also, these are typically arranged by point group as well. So if I'm looking for specific examples to practice, like DND, I can find, let's see, staggered ethane. And then I can see all of those individual. I can see the principal C3 axis. Seeing that rotation, I can see the S6 axis rotating by 60 degrees and then reflecting through a perpendicular plane. I can see the inversion center and practice seeing that inverting through the origin. And I can see where those C2s are and where the sigma Ds bisect them. So it's at this point where it becomes highly useful to start using Otterbein to practice and see these things because it can become very quickly just a jumble of words as I'm describing these, but the visual picture is much more helpful. Okay, D and H would be the same uh, set of things that D groups all have, but now you have N sigma Vs and you also have a sigma H. So you have something that's perpendicular to the original group. So eclipsed ethane would be D3H. Let's see if they have that um, ethane eclipsed, and they do. So you can see it's a pretty similar symmetry, but now we have this sigma H perpendicular to our C3 axis. So that is a D3H molecule. Okay, then you start getting into things that are very high symmetry, that have a lot of symmetry operations, a lot of symmetry elements. TD, tetrahedral, like methane. OH, octahedral, like uh, sulfur hexafluoride and IH, icosahedral, like a buckyball, C60. And those are more of uh, one-off type things that you just have to get used to visualizing individually. Uh, then lastly, lastly, we have linear groups, things like C infinity V, which are linear molecules, C infinity V or D infinity H. A homonuclear diatomic, like H2, would be D infinity H. A heteronuclear diatomic like CO would be C infinity V, depending on whether or not it has a sigma H or uh, an inversion center in the middle there. Okay, um, then since it has a C infinity pr principal axis, we can rotate by any, or any amount because the molecule is linear. It's going to have infinity sigma Vs, which are parallel to that uh, axis of rotation. So these all can be uh, seem confusing and intimidating at the beginning. Um, just try to read try to read through them a few times and get a feel for what constitutes each group or each sets of groups. And in future videos, we're going to have examples of these and also a flow chart for how to determine looking at a molecule and seeing what the elements symmetry elements are. How do I determine on a step by step systematic basis to figure out what point group the, the individual molecule I'm looking at has.